in Taiwan, you're under arrest. Yeah. Um, it's involving a relationship with Well, have you gone to jail? No. You do go to jail. I'm little. They're going to tear me apart. Okay, no more games, right? Yeah. Other than that. Uh, uh, my juice? Can I try again? That layer is wine. I'm not lying to you folks. I'm not a pervert. I'm not a, anything. I'm not... Maybe you are Teachers are supposed to be the good guys, right? But what about when they turn out to be creeps? Check out these three cases where cops busted teachers for some seriously messed up stuff. In March 2018, Brittany Zamora, a 27-year-old teacher, got arrested after a parent of one of her students at Las Brisas Elementary in Arizona found sexually explicit messages between Brittany and the 13-year-old child. Later, they also found that Brittany was engaging in inappropriate physical contact with the child in the class. Later, Brittany got arrested by the cops right in the middle of the highway. They handcuffed her and checked her for any jewelry that could be dangerous, taking off everything she was wearing. Throughout all this, Brittany was really cooperative, agreeing to the searches and even helping the cops. She knew exactly why she was being arrested, but she was hoping that by being helpful, the cops might treat her better during the whole process. Do you know about that? Do you have uh, anything on you that's gonna hurt me, poke me, stick me, Brittany? Do you have anything on you that's gonna hurt me, poke me, stick me, anything like that? Uh, no. Anything dangerous? No weapons? Okay. Can I take my ring off? Yeah, can you? Yeah. Am I gonna be able to put it back on? Yeah, you will. Okay. You'll, you'll this is your personal your property. property, so everything that goes in this bag, okay. I'm gonna take your necklace off as well. So we'll document it. Can you unhandcuff me so I can take my belly button right now? You're what? My belly we'll, we'll let you. We'll do that at the okay. jail. Okay. okay. We're not going to have Or at the station. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll have you do the same with the nose ring, too. Right not right now. No. Yeah. Is this uh, just an outer? Yeah, okay. you can take it off. No, you can keep it on. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Can you turn towards me? Open up your mouth. Lift up your tongue. Okay. And then I will help you. I know it's a big step. <laughs> I'm only five foot. I know, I, I feel well. it. Ready? Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Afterward, the officers hauled her off to the station for interrogation. Brittany acted all chill, like she was just heading out for a coffee run thinking she'd breeze back home soon. But little did she know, the cops were about to uncover some seriously nasty stuff about the whole situation, and they weren't planning to let her walk away anytime soon. Brittany and the kid had an illegal relationship, and they had supposedly met up at least four times in a month. Sometimes it happened in her car, sometimes in her classroom, and sometimes with other students around. Yep. And then we are going to go over to that wall. This way, this way. Um, actually, I'm gonna have you stand up because I'm gonna take those cuffs off you so you can take your uh, jewelry out. to get your belly button ring out, I can put you in the cell. Can you just turn around? That's fine. That's fine. I don't know. And there's no way I can call my husband or anything? They'll, they'll talk to you and everything, explain what they're doing, but just sit tight, okay. So they kicked things off with the officer getting Brittany's backstory and chatting about why she was brought in. She couldn't help but wonder if the complaint came from the school or the victim's parent. Did they tell you why you're here? They didn't tell you why you're under arrest? No. Okay. Um, it's involving um, that relationship with... Okay. Um, so, I told you a little bit ago that I would... Um, I was going to come and talk to you and give you the opportunity to, to tell me what's going on. Okay. Um, obviously, we both know why you're here. So, um, 
I'm going to read your rights okay. because you are under arrest, and okay. then I'm um, going to just get some background information from okay. you. Okay. Meanwhile, the victim's friend mentioned how awkward it was to witness whatever went down in the classroom. I was one of the witnesses, or one of the people that saw Ms. Amora. Was Ms. Amora um, saying anything? No, they're just doing it. It was very uncomfortable. So that's why the second day they're doing stuff, I just left the room. Brittany quickly realized things weren't looking good for her. Tears started flowing as she pleaded with the officer, desperate to know what was coming next. Her options were pretty slim. The court slapped her with a $250,000 bond, and if she managed to post it, she'd be stuck on pretrial supervision with electronic monitoring. You know, you don't have a criminal history. At least you talk, tell me that, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I haven't checked yet. They never did anything. Um, so... I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I do know... Um, I'm not going to ask you any more questions because you said you wanted an attorney, so um, did you have any more questions for me? What are the next steps? Um, the next step is basically you, you do go to jail okay. tonight. Um, I submit some paperwork. I'm little. They're gonna tear me apart. Well, I mean, if you have problems with somebody, you can voice that to somebody. Okay. Um, and if there are problems, they can isolate you. How long do I stay in jail for? The basically the way it usually happens is uh, you go down there and um, you see an IA judge within uh, within 12 hours. Okay. Um, and that judge will determine what they want to do. Okay. And so they will determine if um, they are going to let you out on a certain amount of bonds. Okay. And they make that determination on, you know, kind of how... I am the best husband in the world. Okay. Well, what's that? What's that? Impose a bond at this time. The court is imposing a secured appearance bond in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you post that, you'll be on pretrial supervision with electronic monitoring. Ms. Zamora, you may not return to the scene of the crime if you post that. No contact with any of the victims, witnesses, officers, and no contact with any minors. No drugs without a valid prescription. The court wants to be very clear: you may not have any contact with any of the witnesses victims or any of their family members. The court is also admonishing you, the court, you may not have someone else contact any of those people on your behalf. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um. When it came to her sentencing, Brittany had a chance to say her piece. She kicked things off by apologizing to the victim's family and owning up to her actions. But when she was facing the jury at trial, she practically pleaded with them for a lighter sentence. She was scared stiff about what was coming her way. She would like to reach the podium, Your Honor? Certainly. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm going to start off by apologizing to the victim and his family. I'm sorry for any undue stress or pain that I may have caused. I'm ashamed of my actions and am completely remorseful and truly regret what took place. I'm known to be a responsible, caring, happy, and thoughtful person. My actions were completely out of character for me. As an adult and teacher, I am meant to set an example and I did not follow according to that expectation. Prior to this incident, I have been an amazing teacher and citizen. I started programs while teaching to help stop bullying, teach girls about nutrition, fitness, create fundraisers to help with autism and help families in need. Filled 25 plus desks with school supplies each year and even one teacher of the year in 2016. As far as a citizen goes, I've lived my life respecting and trying to obey every law. I am not a threat to society by any means. On the contrary, I have tried to help our society as much as I can. This includes helping out the homeless, volunteering for the city, and giving time to assist with church programs. Over the past 16 months, I've grown within my faith, and that has helped me not only get through each day, but has led me to reflect on how sincerely I took life for granted. A life that I've been working so hard to set up for a successful and bountiful future. I would do anything to re-enter society sooner for a second chance. This sentencing is not only taking decades of my own life and experiences <clears throat> away, but those of my loved ones as well. My family knows who I am and my heart, so it is just as hard on them. Therefore, I would also like to apologize to them. 
I stated earlier, I never want to hurt anyone, and it tears me apart to know that I have, and I'm deeply sorry. <clears throat> Going forward, I would like to attend counseling and all other required courses. I obtain a new degree and seek new employment. I have already relinquished my teaching cert certification. My hope is to rejoin society a better and more grateful person. I have an incredible support system and know they will all be there for me every step of the way. Your Honor, I know the state did not take my mitigation and assessments into consideration, but I hope you can. I am a good and genuine person who made a mistake and regrets it deeply. I ask that you please have leniency in regards to my sentencing, that you see me as a person with a hopeful future and not just another number or case. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Despite her begging, Brittany ended up with a 20-year stretch in prison, the least they could give her for what she'd done. But that wasn't all. She also got slapped with lifetime probation and had to register as an offender. And to top it off, she's got to deal with all the dangers lurking in prison. Knowing full well what she did could make her a target. She even begged the court, fearing they'd tear her apart for it. But that's what you get for preying on innocent kids. Maybe she'll learn how it feels. For the next case, we have a teacher named Kimberly who drank wine on her first day of school. But before we proceed, please hit the like button. Now, let's jump straight into it. On August 17th, Perkins Tryon school officials told the police that a teacher named Kimberly, who was drunk on the first day of school. At first, everything seemed normal when she arrived. But as the day went on, other staff started noticing her red eyes, slurred speech, and difficulty finishing sentences. When confronted, Kimberly claimed that she took medication last night to help her sleep and insisted she hadn't taken anything else since then. No one was buying her story, so the superintendent asked her to take a breathalyzer test, and she blew a .248. To put that into perspective, the legal limit is .08, and anything over .25 is considered alcohol poisoning. With a blood alcohol level this high, it's almost certain Kimberly was drinking at school, but the officers still need to find some evidence that she was in fact drinking on school grounds. So, um, just observing you in the classroom, it looks like something's off a little bit. And so I've asked uh, Officer Dean to come in here and visit with it. Has you, you know, uh, have you taken anything that's, you know, do you have a prescription for anything that maybe you have taken today that just seems like you're not the same person that I talked to this morning? Um, I did take a, I, I did take some medication last night to, to help me with sleep because I have some anxiety stuff, but that's, that's, I can't think of the name of it right now, but I could look it up when I get home. Okay. So you haven't taken anything while you were at school? No. Okay. You're going to blow into it like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? And you're going to keep blowing until I tell you to stop, until I tell you to stay, until I tell you to stop, okay? All right. All right, give it a second. I don't know how to do this. You're just going to blow into it like you're blowing up a balloon as soon as I tell you to. All right, you ready? Take a big deep breath. Blow, 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 blow. All right, stop. Good job. You going to tell me the truth? How much you had to drink? I drank last night. There's no way you drank last night. Well, I did drink last night. Did you drink at school is what he's asking. Tell us the truth. I, I didn't drink at school. That wouldn't blow that right there. You blew right two times the legal limit. I did? Yeah. This thing is pretty accurate. No, I know it is. So I, know, I know it is. You blew like a .24. I don't know what that means. What's legal it? limit's .08. Okay. Do you drink often? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, okay. When asked for her husband's number, she outright refused to call him. Despite everything, the superintendent was being generous by allowing her to resign, which would make it easier for her to get another job in a similar field. But being stubborn, Kimberly seemed determined to stay, desperately trying to talk her way out of the situation in a truly ridiculous manner. Can I check your eyes? Do what? Can I check your eyes? Yeah. Can I stand up? I'm not going to go through the entire test, but stand with your feet by your side, hands down to your feet.
feet side to side. Tail to handle, there you go. All right. Follow the tip of my pan with your eyes, your eyes only, do you understand? Uh-huh. You drank recently. Do you know your husband's number? If I call him? I, I don't want you to call him. Well, I can't let you leave. If you leave, you're going to get arrested. Yeah, I'm going to rush you for DUI. So I need somebody to come pick you up. Come. Uh, come. Uh, I, I know I've been having a hard time. I just. Uh, am, am I going to get fired? Just I, Honestly, yes. Or you can resign. You're under the influence at school with kids. That cannot happen. Kimberly told the officer she drank half a box of wine last night, but that was it. On the other hand, the officer pointed out that the problem was she seemed fine in the morning, but her behavior changed as the day went on, and that definitely cannot happen from last night's drink. So Kimberly did her best and tried to act dumb, but honestly, it's just hilarious to watch her reaction as cops collect more evidence. I, I did drink a lot last night. How much did you drink? I, I don't... Too much. What What do you drink? Wine. So wine. How, many, how many bottles of wine did you drink? Uh, we had the box. Did you drink a whole box of wine? Mm, half a box. And you stopped drinking at like three this morning? Presley Johnson, please come to the uh, office. Presley the problem is, is they said you were please fine this morning. The and then now, after, recently, they've noticed a difference. See, and that's weird to me. That's, that's, uh, that, that it was okay this morning. I would think that it would be. Which makes me think that you, you've drank recently. I, I would, I would think. I, I could see, like, this morning, but I couldn't see... Kimberly still refused to call anyone to pick her up and wouldn't go with the officer either. Instead, she just kept dragging things out and wasting their time. She asked the superintendent what would happen if someone did come to get her, and then she started expressing her shame for what she had done, admitting she had let everyone down, including the officer. So who do you go home to? Your husband? Mm -hmm. So why can't we call your husband? I don't want you to... I don't want you to have to call him. Well, he's either going to come here and pick you, or he's going to take you to the police station. Well, I don't want that to happen either. Well, then you got to figure this out. We're not going to do this run around. Either you make the decision, or I'll make it for you, and you'll be walked out of here in handcuffs. Okay, I don't want... I don't okay. Want... Then we need to call someone. So, if, if we call somebody to come and get me, so then what happens after that? Then you're going to meet me tomorrow at my office, and we'll discuss your appointment. What, what, what time tomorrow? 9 a.m. So, so what happens, so what happens then, Mr. Ogle? Well, my recommendation to the board is going to be to terminate you because you're under the influence. Or you can resign. You, you won't give me like a second chance no. or anything? No. Not in this situation. Your story's changed two or three times. I don't think you're personally being honest with us. Uh, well, I'm am sorry. I don't I, I don't mean to, to 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 waste your your time or anything like that. I'm I'm sorry. I just want someone to come pick you up, so I don't have to humiliate you by walking out. No, I don't. No, please don't do that. Then please. let's call well, someone. We need a number right now to call, or I'm done. Okay. Okay. So give me a number. Who am I calling? I I don't I don't have it by heart. Where's your phone at? It's in the classroom. Can I go? Can I go get you it? You can't. No. Huh? You can't. No. I will let. Let me see if I can get. It. And I'm not trying to humiliate you. I don't want to humiliate you. I understand people. There's stuff probably going on in your life I have nothing, know nothing about. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. You don't have time to hear all of us. Stuff. 
How long have you been a teacher? <laughs> um, I've worked with kids my whole life. <laughs> Is this your first year to actually be a teacher? No, I, I, I taught at Westwood and I taught at Head Start. I'm so sorry, every, I let everybody down. I'm sorry. When the superintendent went into her classroom to look for her phone, he found an empty glass that smelled like alcohol. Clearly, he understood that Kimberly had lied again, saying the glass was from yesterday. But that doesn't excuse her. Drinking on school grounds yesterday or a week before is still illegal. During their conversation, Kimberly tried to do damage control and desperately asked what she could do to make everything all right. But the officer simply replied that she could just be honest. Okay, no more games, right? Yeah. What is in that? Uh, uh, my juice. Can I try again? That layer is wine. I thought that was from yesterday. Did you drink uh, it up here yesterday? Uh, well, I brought it from home. Sitting there today, this morning. You gonna get your phone and call someone? Well, is I it not it, in there? I thought it was on the desk. It's on the desk. I have half mind to arrest you just because you lied to me. Okay, what do I need to do to, to make everything right? I just wanted honesty. That's all I wanted. I, I drank out of that yesterday. I didn't drink out of it today. I don't believe you. I, I drank out of that coming to work yesterday. Well, where Where's the cup that you drank out of today? Is it in your classroom too? I don't, I don't think so. Honestly, I... I thought I was doing a good job today. I don't know. I, I don't know. Later, Kimberly asked the officer if she could call her nearby friend. But at this point, the officer had enough of her nonsense and refused. He checked her bag for anything illegal, then arrested her and escorted her to the car through the back door. I, I, I've got a friend right here in, no. in Perkins. No, please. you're under arrest. Please don't do this. It's too late. No, please, please, please. I can't do this, please. <laughs> Here's the deal. You're under arrest. So, no, hey, just... we're not going to sit here and whine. It's, that's over. Am I going to find anything illegal in here? I don't think so. Famous last words. No, officer. I'm sorry. Officer Dean, please, please don't do this. Please. I, I, please I, Where's your wallet at? Your driver's license. Uh, is your first name Kimberly? Is that yes. your legal first name? Is your driver's license in Oklahoma? Yes. Wait, please don't arrest me. Please let me just call a friend to come and get me. I'll, ca I'll call a friend. I'll, I'll do whatever I have to, but please don't arrest me. Please. please. Hello. Thank you for taking me around this way. Go this way. He's gonna look in her bag. There's some keys in her bag. I just don't know if it's a school key. That's that's. Uh, Do you have anything in your pockets? Uh, there's my ID and. and that's, the school keys. To, that's to my classroom. Hey, Mr. Ogle? What is that? What is that? Kimberly was taken to the station and charged with a single count of public intoxication. Thankfully for the kids, she lost her job and was banned from ever stepping foot on the premises again. Fortunately, no kid was harmed or traumatized, but that cannot be said for this next case where a teacher sexually assaulted his student in the classroom. In March 2019, 49-year-old teacher Julio Soto had touched a female student inappropriately. Fortunately, with enough courage, the kid managed to confide in her friends about the incident, who then reported it to the school official. 
You see, Soto had taken the female student aside from her PE class and brought her to the classroom, supposedly to fix a test she had taken earlier. While in the classroom alone, Soto took advantage of her by touching her chest. But this wasn't a single instance because during the investigation, it was discovered that several other children had also been victims of Soto's misbehavior. So you say you normally take three to four kids. What happened this time? This time it was just her. You know, she was asking me because she goes, I, you know, I was concerned about Friday because you're going to meet my mommy and all this stuff. And I said, okay, you know, I, I would, you know, I wasn't even thinking. But I just why? wouldn't even worry. Well, if you're going to take a female student to your classroom, you didn't think to like, uh, let me just grab um, another. All, and honestly, I'm just, I just wanted to get her work done, get her, and then go back to specials. I was, and I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, so, you know, and like I said, that's my bad. I, I, it, no, she's at the farther point. But she's facing me, so that way, if she she calls me, it's like I can look up at her without walking over because I'm still I'm doing my grades on my computer. While she was sitting at the U shape or kidney table, did you walk over to check on her? And, and not until she said something about her wrist or okay. her arm. And what did she say about her arm? That she started tearing up, and then she started uh, complaining about her arm. It's like, you know, you said you was you were fine, and and she goes, well, it started hurting me, you know. It's like, like, did she, you know? So I walked over and I said, not asked her, can I touch her arm? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, so I, I kind of held her like this, one hand here and one hand here. Okay. So I looked at it, it's like, is, is your wrist hurting? Okay. And she goes, no, it's not my wrist. I said, so I pointed like this. I said, is your forearm hurting? She said, yeah, that's where it hurts. I said, well, did you tell your mom and dad? And she goes, yeah. And then mom, I go, what did mom and dad say? She goes, nothing. The investigators asked Soto why he was alone in a room with a single student. Even if the school didn't have a policy against it, it's generally good practice to avoid such situations. And Soto knew this. When the investigators brought up the fact that the door was covered, Soto said it wasn't intentional. This only made the investigators more suspicious, as it seemed like Soto had set things up to prevent anyone from seeing what was happening in the classroom. Was she the only one in the classroom with yes. you at the time? Do you normally take kids in the no, classroom? No, that's like what that? I was telling them. Normally I try to get a couple kids, and I was just, it was just, is that like no. policy or is that a common practice or it's, what is that? It's probably common practice. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it is written somewhere, but if you're going to bring a student back to your classroom, you always bring at least um, uh, if there's another adult there or if not an adult, then you're supposed to bring a couple of kids. And why didn't you on that day? I, I wasn't even thinking. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's why I said, I yeah. said, that's my bad. You know, I'll get a, you know, if I get a count statement from the school, that's fine. I, I just, I was, I was, all I do was trying to, I knew she was parents were coming, I just wanted her to get this stuff done, huh. and then and that was it. So, basically, you brought her up just to do the work, correct? Correct, yes. What is that thing that's on your door? It's like a black cover, what is it for? Oh, one, um, that's for active assailants. Do you normally have yours drawn? It's always up. Okay. It's always up? Yeah. Unless we, we have an active challenge and we put it down, or when the kids play with it after school. Because yeah. it's, it's only taped. Okay. When the investigators asked Soto about the sling on the girl's arm, Soto claimed there wasn't any sling, but said he remembered the conversation word for word. This made the detective furious, and she warned Soto not to act foolishly, telling him that lying was pointless. She had a sling on. I honestly don't remember the sling. Okay. I knew it was the week before, but I... She had a sling on that day. Her sling, she had a full sling on, her arm was completely wrapped. And it shows her class downstairs already, and she's sitting on a bench, okay, talking to another student. You come down with your class, and you approach her at the bench. Now you remember taking that. her to the classroom to do work, and right. you remember specific details about her arm was hurting and you went over to her and you were like, let me see, and you were like touching her arm. It was very caring of you. And why I, I if you remember those specific details, I don't understand why you can't remember the detail about the sling. Soto denied ever touching any of the students, boy or girl, inappropriately. He insisted to the investigators that he hadn't done anything wrong. However, as soon as the investigators mentioned that there were multiple witnesses, Soto began to admit to his actions. Otherwise, who knows how much more he would have lied. At any time while in the classroom, did you say, hey, I'm gonna tickle you? Did you attempt no. to tickle her? Mm -mm. Did you place your hands on her in any nope. other way? 
No, nope, other, sure? other than her arm. Okay. Are because sure? my, that, because she is, she's one of those students that, um, that would tell, you know, if I did something like uh -huh. that, she would, I know she would tell the whole world. So, so you're I, telling me if you did something to her, she would tell? Yes. So why are we getting this allegation? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. At any point, did you touch her? Other than, other than arm. Arm. Other ever. Than arm. Have no. you ever tickled her? No. Have you ever horse played with her? Not horse play, like touching her, no. Have you ever horse play, grab ass, whatever you want to call it? Have you guys ever did anything that would allude to being a playful manner, in a playful manner? Have not, you joked with her? Yeah. Okay. So you guys... But not, well, but not like one-on-one -on -one joking in the class. So, so okay. We're yeah. in a group setting. Yeah. Have you ever tried to tickle her in a group setting? No. A lot of other students have told us, like, you'll you'll mess around like every once in a while, like joke around with them and stuff. And sometimes you'll like try to lighten the mood if you see that they're sad or they're down right. or something mm -hmm. like that. And one of the ways that you do that is to like just jab them a little bit, like okay, in the ribs tickling, or anything like tickling. that. Well, they said that you call it like a tickle, like a tickling thing, where you're like, ah, okay, I, I'm gonna I, get you, I'm gonna tickle but, you. But I never touch anything appropriately. Well, we're not, we're not saying, we're not alluding to you touch them inappropriate. We're just trying to figure out have you ever tickled them? They, like we literally, like she just said, we've interviewed right. like forty like, something. Like, like this. And they're like, you'll poke them right. and you'll be like, hey, I'm gonna get your tickle right. spot, and then. Right. After this, Soto tried to tell the investigators that if there were multiple witnesses, maybe the students were trying to prank everyone since students can be notorious. However, the accusations came from multiple students across different classrooms and grades, making it clear to the investigators that this was as real as it gets. But I would never, ever, if I had a Bible, I would put it right there. I would, and I'm sure you probably hear this all the time, but I would never touch a girl or a boy, for that matter, in any inappropriate area. We're not calling it inappropriate. We're just asking if you ever tickled them. So right. you're telling me you'll poke at them, but you don't say anything? Because that will make it awkward. Okay. Yeah, well. Have you ever reached out and, like, touched? No. Nothing like that? Like on the side or anything? Just been like, hey, you know. No. They touched me. I already have a bruise right here from one yeah. of my girls giving me a hard hug. One of the girls gave you a hard hug? Yeah, she's a good girl. <laughs> have you ever received a complaint from any student on campus? Yeah, two, like I told you about two years ago. And what was that complaint exactly? The the same the same thing, the tickling. Okay. The tickling? Yeah. Okay. So you have tickled students? No, not her. Not her. So how did that happen? So why would the kids tell me, different kids now, Right. all, all different ages, all different areas of the school tell me that that's not true, that, that they've seen and heard you make these comments? I don't know. The investigators then pointed out to Soto that he was clearly lying and to take this situation very seriously because his story kept changing and didn't match what the witnesses were saying. They made sure Soto admitted it was his mistake, making it easier to guide him into making a full confession. You said she was lying, but earlier you told me that if you were to ever do something, you know that she would be the one who would just go out there and tell the world. Exactly. So why is she telling the world? I don't know. That's so, why. That's why I'm. I'm very confused and upset. Why the lie? I don't know. That's why I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I don't know why they're lying. Right. And I don't know why it's a whole bunch of people telling me the same story. Mm -hmm. The very same story. The, the details and the facts don't change. I've been doing this job for going on 11 years yeah. now. And when details and stories don't change, there's usually something to it. So what I want to do is not. I don't want you to paint yourself as this bad person, this monster. But Soto didn't give up, insisting to the investigators that he didn't remember touching the girl, despite several witnesses claiming otherwise. Then, the investigators pointed out that the girl's grades had significantly dropped, which can also indicate that something traumatic might have happened to her. I think that you do. No, ma'am, I don't. I don't know about that, because it's... you. you your story that you were telling my partner from last night is varying now. Well, and the story that you're telling me in here is that these kids are all lying on you. Even though you're no. they're your favorite teacher. Right after this February 13th, this Wednesday, mm -hmm. this specific date that we're focused so hard on right, right. now, we've been talking about right. for the last, I don't know, hour, mm -hmm. why are her grades plummeting? I don't know. I mean, 60s. 
I mean, like, well, cause she's that's, doing terribly right. now. And that's class. why that's why we had to talk with the parents with the 504. But the 504 talk happened on a Friday, Correct. Yes. long before her grades started plummeting. Mm -hmm. So far, nothing Soto said had been convincing enough for the investigators to believe he didn't commit the actions he was accused of. She was working on something in your classroom, mm -hmm. be it a test or homework or whatever right. it was, she was working on something. And you went over to her and you place your hand on her. On the arm, yes. No. No. That's not where you place your hand. Yes, ma'am. Why is everything else not lining up? Why would I do it to a student, to a, to a student that I know is, would tell everybody? Because you've done it before and she hasn't. And you have the capability, the opportunity, and the intent. Right. But I'm not, I'm not a... I'm not a predator, I'm not a stalker, I'm not, or I'm not a stalker, but I'm, uh, You just agree with my partner. You have the capability, the opportunity, right, and so the does, intent. Right, so you, the intent, you not the intent. Well, you just agreed with him. You literally just met the triangle. You're in a room. Soto then tried to play dumb and said he couldn't remember doing anything wrong. But by this point, the investigators had enough and switched gears. Clearly playing good cop, bad cop wasn't working. So now they started pushing Soto to admit that he messed up. I'm starting to really pull back from this idea, okay, that maybe you didn't mean for something to happen. Because nothing that you're saying is lining up with uh, the video, uh, nothing that you're saying is lining like, up well, with what other that. students I don't are telling me, nothing right. is lining up but with why her grades suddenly started to plummet, nothing is lining up. I've been doing this for quite a while, and when the facts don't add up, there is a problem. Yeah. You're not a stupid person. You're not, you, you're an intelligent man, okay? I know that from talking to you. I'm not a stupid person. I'm, I'm an intelligent person. What I'm asking is for us to meet on equal ground and speak as intelligent people to each other and right. speak as adults to each other. And what I'm, what I'm starting not to get is that you don't want to tell me either because you think you can outsmart me which is not going to happen, or you don't want to tell me what happened because you're afraid. So which well, one is I'm it? I'm afraid no matter what because I'm about to, you know, I'm feeling I'm going to be arrested for something I didn't do, and, and that's what's really upset. After a few minutes of back and forth, the investigators finally managed to get Soto to agree that he'd be mad if his kids' teachers acted like he did. But then even now, he tried to wiggle his way out of it saying it's not the same because he didn't do anything bad. I, I know. I'm asking. The same way. The same way as what? For be upset and hurtling. If somebody tickled your daughter in school, you'd be upset? Yeah. So why do you feel like you can do it? But I, I don't... Why do you feel like you can do it? But I, 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 I don't do it to... Why do you feel like you can do it? Just. I, is the question. I don't, I'm not asking for a justification. I'm asking mm -hmm. why do you feel like you can do it? If you would be happy, if you would not be happy with the same behavior that you're exhibiting, right. why can you do it and not other people? But I'm, I'm not doing it to... Well, neither are they. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that they are either. I told you I just made, made a mistake as far as being alone and not thinking should have brought a couple of kids up. You know, that would, we would not be here right now. I also believe we would not be here right now, and we would have been done a lot sooner if we gotten the full truth. And I agree. Soto finally admitted he might have made inappropriate comments about the students' bodies. This behavior is unacceptable for anyone, but it's especially appalling for a teacher. You know, Mr. Soto is making comments about my body. Mr. Soto is saying that I have a nice butt. More than one student said that, not just one, and more than one student heard it. Later realizing that his future is almost guaranteed to be ruined, Soto decided to speak to his lawyer, which left the investigators with no more questions, and the interview was over. Just tell me. Was it an accident? Just tell me. I watched it happen. Just tell me. I don't want you to be this. I'm gonna go to jail, no matter what. 
you guys can but I, I know how it works. Know what I'm going to go to jail right after this. I want to know what happened. And I want to know why. I don't want you to worry about any of this other caca. I want you to tell me why. Because I want to be able to articulate why. I want to be able to say, who is a guy that made a mistake? And maybe you need a little help. Maybe you need some counseling. I'm, I'm probably going to go to jail after tonight. Why are we stuck on that? Because that, that's my whole future is teaching. You know, I'm not gonna ever. I'll get fired right after this. If I get, if I go to jail tonight, I'm, I'm gonna be fired. And you don't think you can make a positive outcome from something that's negative? Tell us. Can I have my lawyer? I'm not saying. Eventually, Julio Soto was charged with one count of lewd or lascivious behavior and one count of molestation of a minor. Soto requested leave to be deployed to serve in the military overseas, but a judge denied his request. His trial has been repeatedly postponed. Thank you for watching. YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best. Watch and find out if it's right.